Welcome back. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Circle Time. It's me, obviously, Kelsey. How are we doing? How was that little musical opener for you? I hope it was good because it's a musical day, I feel like. It's, I just like the music is in the air, you guys. I don't even know how to explain it. And I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about, but welcome to circle time and like gather around the damn circle, bitches. Okay, sorry. I don't know what the hell just happened to me as soon as I started recording, but hello. How are we doing? I hope everybody, when you're listening to this or as you're listening to this or whatever the hell I'm trying to say, I just hope that you're all doing okay. And... I'm happy to be here with you in the circle, my sweet, sweet circlers. So hello, how have we been? I've had a pretty solid week myself. I don't have too many updates for you. I do have to tell you first and foremost that I finished the book I was reading. This circle time book club is going very fast because I already finished every summer after and holy shit, you guys, so good. That book was, I felt a little bit slow at the start, but maybe it's just because I had just finished It Ends With Us and It Starts With Us and I was like so into those characters. So maybe I just like felt like it was slow, but then it it got really, really good and I just loved it. So every summer after, highly recommend if you haven't read it to read it. And now I have started the book, Carrie Soto is Back. That's what it's called. And that's by Taylor Jenkins Reid, who wrote Daisy Jones and the Six and Evelyn Hugo. So she, we know that she's fantastic. And so I'm very excited about this book. And I'll keep you updated. So that is exciting. I've just been like getting back into the swing of things. Like I was talking last week about how I don't really have like resolutions. I just am trying to like... I don't know. I I think goals are good for the start of the new year, but I ordered groceries last week and this is the first time I feel like ever that I actually ate pretty much every single thing that I bought. Like, I feel like I always buy groceries. I buy one way too much lettuce, way too much lettuce every time. I always end up with more spinach than I actually need. And I always get like a tub of spinach and I never finish it. This week I finished it all. I was putting it in smoothies and I found like I like perfected this like salad recipe that I feel like is good is like yummy and has everything like good for me in it. I don't even know if that's true, but that's just how I feel. So I finished my tub of spinach. I always get too much lettuce. Another thing I always get too much of carrots. I always order carrots order. I always get carrots. Okay. And sometimes I order my groceries. I I order my groceries a lot. Okay. Because I'm lazy and sometimes like going into public isn't what I feel like doing. So, and because like while I'm doing something else, my groceries could be coming to me. Do you know what I mean? It feels more like productive, but this is so besides the point. I should be going to the grocery store. I know that, but whatever. Carrots, always get too many carrots. I just like think I'm going to eat so many more carrots. Like I'm always like, oh my God, carrots are like such a good like snack. And then it's like, bitch you're not eating carrots as a snack you're like when you want a snack you're gonna go get some chips and you know that you're gonna get some Cheez-Its you're gonna get even just some sort of like crisp something and carrots are crisp but like you're not going for the carrots when I'm looking for a snack I'm going into the pantry I'm not usually going into the fridge but I did have some snack carrots this week because I was really like determined to finish my groceries I'm going to be honest, I didn't finish the carrots this week, but that's okay because we finished the tub of spinach. Something else I always get too much of is ginger. I always think I'm like really going to use a lot of ginger for some reason. What else do I get too much of? I don't know, but this time around I ordered kind of perfectly. So I just reordered some groceries for this week and got like pretty much the same exact order. And I'm just proud of myself because I feel like this week I really like actually kind of stuck to a routine because something that I've struggled with so much, 
as I've kind of like changed careers, like obviously when I was teaching, like I had a set ex- exactly set schedule. Like I I had to be there at eight and I left at five because I did the after school program. So like I was there, that was my schedule. But then when I kind of like became my own boss and started making content and stuff, I just kind of like lost it because I was my own boss. I could get up whenever the hell I wanted. I could kind of do whatever I wanted whenever I wanted. And like the freedom was a little bit overwhelming at times just because I was very relaxed and not hard on myself. And I don't think it's, I don't think you should be hard on yourself, but I think that you should have structure. And I lacked a lot of that. And and I've gotten better at it over the years for sure. But this week I like actually kind of had a productive routine and it felt so good. Like waking up and making myself a smoothie. Like I made myself a nice smoothie in the morning, worked out. I didn't work out every day, but did a workout if I wanted to. And then did work and then like made my salad, like just something about like having my groceries, using my groceries actually, and like having a routine. I was able to like keep my house cleaner. I was able to, I felt like happier and lighter all the time, probably because I was like eating better unintentionally. Like I was just eating, eating better and I felt more energized and like, I don't know, it was really, I felt a real difference and I was taking damn vitamins And I told you that something I really wanted to do in the new year was take more vitamins because I've just always been so bad at it. And I, and I did this week. And then maybe that also helped. I don't know. I think like, usually I try, I'm like, I set these like resolutions and I put so much pressure on myself that they all just like crumble beneath me right away. But I mean, it's literally been a week. Like it's January 8th. Like, I mean, who the fuck knows? Next week I could be like, never mind. But I'm just saying like not putting so much pressure on myself on New Year's to do all of this shit helped so much because I just was like doing it because I actually wanted to, you know, and not because I felt like I had to because it was the new year. And so like just listen to yourselves and do what feels right because it's not that deep. But yeah, we did a lot of wedding planning. We're like, I was telling you last week, but like we are so in the thick of it now that it's honestly pretty wild. But we did a lot of wedding planning. Some of Cody's groomsmen came over and got fitted for their tuxes and... We had multiple meetings with the wedding planner who I mean, I am so thankful for. I, If I had to plan this wedding by myself, I would have absolutely no idea where to even begin. Like I don't even know that we'd ever even get married just because I don't know how to plan a wedding. Like I feel like everything is being so taken care of thanks to her. So I'm very thankful for that and for her. And we've just been like checking things off the list. Making lists has been unbelievably helpful and checking them twice. I totally see why Santa does what he does now because lists are the best. And now that I think about it, I haven't checked my list. I don't know. This weekend like actually just felt like a weekend. And I also feel like that's because I'm not drinking right now. I'm like kind of doing, I guess it's dry January. I really like genuinely with everything inside of me hate that term. Like, I hate the concept. I don't know why. It's just like, if you want to drink during January, drink. Like, why do you, like, I don't know. Because usually, like, I don't do it. And I always feel like kind of guilty. Like, the people that are doing dry January, I'm like, oh, my God. I, why am I not doing that? But, like, it's stupid. I'm just, I just, I'm not drinking. I kind of just wanted to take a little break from drinking, like, before our wedding and our honeymoon and stuff. So, like, I just kind of am not drinking at this time. But. And it just so happens to be in January, but I hate like, I hate that it seems like I'm doing dry January, even though like technically I'm doing the same thing that someone that's doing dry January would do. It just is like preachy to me for some reason. I don't know. I don't, I just don't love it because I think drinking is fun if you do it in a healthy manner. And I don't want to make people feel bad for like going out and having a fun time if they want to and if they're being smart about it. So that's that. But I will tell you, 
not drinking, <laughs> not to get like, like preacher vibes, but like not drinking this weekend made it feel like I had 45 extra days in my weekend, genuinely. Like I, the fact that I didn't spend a day like hungover was really nice. So, and I just got outside. Oh my God, Cody, this is going to be really embarrassing. I can't believe I'm actually admitting this, but for my Christmas gift, Cody got me a stroller. <laughs> he got me a stroller so that I could take the cats on a walk because I don't think it's fair that they don't ever get to see the outside world. So he got me like a double decker stroller where Chili can sit in the top and the cats can be like zipped in on the bottom. And because Chili doesn't really like to walk. So I popped Chili in the top and put the cats in the bottom and Cody and I walked them around our neighborhood. And it was the cutest thing I've ever seen. They, the cats loved it. Chili didn't love sitting at the top of the stroller. And it was the first time he ever actually walked. He walked next to the stroller the entire time which was perfect. And the cats loved it. They just sat there quietly and laid and stared out the like side little window thing. And I think they liked seeing the outside world. And I was so happy to show them that because they've never seen it. Like I was like, this is your neighborhood. So many different smells. I didn't want them to be scared from the loud cars. So I kind of just like walked them around the neighborhood. We didn't go in any main streets. But it was fun. And so anyway, it's just, I like got outside. I got lunch with some different friends. I got lunch with Remy and Alicia who were on the podcast and our friend Janelle. One day I got lunch with Peyton who was on the podcast a couple of episodes ago today. And like, I just, I don't know. I just feel like I have like this like pep in my step for some reason. And it could possibly have to do with not drinking or just like making my meals. I don't know what it is, but that's what's been going on. And if you are hungover while you're listening to this or you were hungover or whatever this weekend, that's also fine because I'm not doing it right. You're like, we're all just doing it. We're all just doing it, you know? And I'm also almost 30. So I'm old, older. So don't worry about it if if you had a different this week experience than me, because like I said, next week I could have a completely different experience where everything doesn't feel like I have a pep in my step. So yeah, don't worry about it. Okay, so I have mentioned this a bit, but something I'm really trying to do more of in the new year is cook all of my meals or at least the majority of my meals. And one of my favorite ways to make that happen is by using HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You can skip the grocery store and take control of your time and budget with delicious recipes delivered straight to your door. I promise you really will love how fast, easy and affordable it is to whip up a restaurant quality meal right in your own kitchen. I personally have been using HelloFresh for years now. And I truly can say that it makes cooking so fun and easy. And every single meal I've made is delicious. Like I genuinely love it. I wouldn't say I'm naturally gifted in the kitchen and I've gained so much confidence in the kitchen from using HelloFresh. Plus, if you're still worried about missing out on those like snacks and desserts and stuff at the grocery store, you can stock up on all of that snacks, sides, desserts, more at HelloFresh Market. All you have to do is add those staples, those sweets to your weekly order and they'll arrive at your doorstep along with your meals. I love HelloFresh so much, you guys, truly. And when you try it, you will see why I love it and why it's America's number one meal kit. I know I have also mentioned every plate to you guys before as a meal kit that I love. And every plate is now owned by HelloFresh. And with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, there's something for literally everyone. I personally love switching between the brands. I just finished an every plate meal kit actually and got a new HelloFresh one. So it's just so much fun and so yummy. And now my sweet circlers can enjoy both brands at a discount with me. So go to HelloFresh.com slash CircleTime21 and use code CircleTime21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. 
That's HelloFresh.com slash CircleTime21 and use code CircleTime21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. I had to get a COVID test today because Cody and I are going to, this is going to be the weirdest sentence that ever comes out of my mouth for sure, but we're going to the Golden Globes. Like literally what the fuck, why? It's so insane and so exciting. And like, I love award shows so much. And I just used to sit and watch award shows. I still do. I love watching award shows. There's just something about it. And the fact that something like the Golden Globes that were that we got invited to the Golden Globes is like literally mind blowing to me and kind of makes me feel like like when Cody texted me about it, I like actually felt nauseous, like so excited. So we're going to the Golden Globes, which is so insane. I think by the time this episode is out, we have already gone. So you'll have already seen pictures and stuff, but we're doing that. And so we had to get COVID tested today. And I have a confession for you all. And that is that I really like the feeling of the stick being shoved up my nostril and twirled around. I think it feels kind of good. And I don't know if that makes me some kind of sicko or what, but I just don't mind it. I mean, like, I mean, I, I don't know. I just, it doesn't hurt. I think it feels kind of good. So I just feel like I have to be transparent with you all about that. But yeah, so that's something else that happened. I can't believe we're going to the Golden Globes. It all happened so fast. We found out like a couple days ago, which is wild. So. We're doing that tomorrow night. We have stylists coming over and then Tuesday, it's just like going to be chaos. And I guess it's like in the midst of wedding planning and all of that, like, do we really need to be adding this on top of it? But I think it's just such an amazing experience and we're so lucky to have the opportunity. We have to, you know, so it's going to be fun and I'm excited and I can't wait to tell you guys about it next week. Taylor Swift is nominated for a Golden Globe, just by the way. And it's like a pretty legit award show. You know what I mean? Not that like the AMAs aren't or any that any award show isn't legit because I think that they're all awesome. But like it's kind of a big one. You know, I'm excited. I'm nervous for sure. I always get a little nervous. Mainly this time I'm nervous because like I have no idea what I'm wearing. And like I, I I won't have much time to think about it because the stylist is coming tomorrow night and then we go to the Golden Globes the next day because we all we found this out like two days ago. So it's kind of insane. And also we do fashion reviews. You all know that. Cody and I do fashion reviews on my YouTube channel. And we kind of have screwed ourselves because now I feel this like overwhelming amount of pressure because if we look bad on the red carpet that would be so embarrassing because we love to critique other people's looks but we do like it's all in good good fun you know so it's not that deep but I'm always like you have to look good you've done this to yourself you have to look good you can't fuck around you know but then again I do always think that if you like what you're wearing it doesn't matter what anybody else says because you you're the only person that matters when it comes to stuff like that. So if you have something that you like, but you think other people won't like it, who the fuck cares? Wear whatever you want. That's my fashion advice for you. That's what I try to do. So there we have it. I guess you'll see, well, you'll already know what we look like by the time this has come out. But yeah, I'll keep you, I will, I'll take some notes while I'm there so I can tell you guys exactly how, what it's like to be there. And I'm going to try to vlog the process of getting ready and stuff too. So there'll be a lot of footage, hopefully from it. We'll see. Cause also I could wake up that morning and feel completely overwhelmed by everything and not film, which I'm getting better at. Well, I'm not getting better at it, but maybe recognizing that you need to like push past that is, is the first step. Right. So yeah, I feel like I, I've i kind of had a slow start back to YouTube in the new year. That's the only thing that I was upset with myself about, about 
last week was that I didn't do much for YouTube. And I think that sometimes I just get kind of hard on myself about it and I overthink my vlogs and my videos and I like kind of doubt what I do. And I think that that's normal. I think it like all of like it comes and goes in waves with jobs. But I just felt like I was just kind of like struggling last week. And I was like, what if my videos just suck and nobody wants to watch them? Blah, blah, blah. I was kind of doubting myself in that sense. Everything else I was like pretty good with. But I was just kind of like nervous to post on YouTube again. I feel like after I take a break on YouTube, I always get nervous to start posting again. And I took a little break after Christmas. So yeah, but I'm going to get back in it. I have a couple videos I want to film and I'm going to start vlogging again. But I just feel like it's good to talk about that kind of stuff because people always just talk about like highlights of careers and whatnot. So it's easy for people who are sometimes struggling to feel like they're alone, but you're not because I think everybody goes through that kind of stuff as well. Even like, it's just nice. It's just nice to talk about those things because you just feel so much less alone and you feel like you're not completely like failing So I just want to remind you that you are not alone in that and that this week is going to be different and we're going to try to push past those intrusive negative thoughts and show why we have this career in the first place, you know? So that's that. What else? Okay, this I did want to talk to you about a couple pop culture things. One, let's talk about North and Kim's TikToks. Because the bound one where North like looks exactly like put on like Kanye's facial hair and looks exactly like him, like that was a lot. And it kind of stressed me out. And I just like really, I just want to be a fly on the wall sometimes in that house. Cause like, what the fuck? That was so insane. And I, I do, you know, the TikToks come up on my For You page a lot and I love them. I think they're, they're having a good time, but. I like when I saw that one, I was like, I couldn't figure out exactly what was happening while it was happening. And then I was like, oh, they're really like, they're really doing it. But they seem to be having a good time. I don't know. I was just like, holy moly. It was kind of a jump scare. She just looks exactly like Kanye. So I don't know why I wanted to talk about that. But that specific one stressed me out. But for the most part, they're like kind of fun and funny. And I wonder like if they think about them nearly as much as like people analyze them. Cause I don't think they do. I think people just analyze them way too much. I think they're just having fun, but who the fuck knows? Like when they danced to like shake it off and everyone was like, Oh my God, she's dancing to a Taylor Swift song. It's like, I don't think it's that deep, but who knows? Maybe it is whatever. That was one thing. Another thing was, did you guys hear about the beef between Ryan Seacrest, my king, and Andy Cohen? Is that his name? Why did I just completely blank blank out? Andy. Yeah. Duh. Andy Cohen and Ryan Seacrest because Andy Cohen said something like when they were like drunk, him and Anderson Cooper, when they when they like did the New Year's Eve special last year, like going into 2022 when they were taking shots and they got kind of drunk and Andy Cohen called like, said like Ryan Seacrest and his pack of losers or something like while they were like both filming in the same vicinity, like in Times Square. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh my God, Kelsey's like, this is Kelsey's half asked news report because I don't actually know some specific details, <laughs> but that's what makes it fun. You know, we're just friends chatting. Okay. But Andy Cohen said something like that when like journey was playing because he didn't like, I don't, I don't even know, but, and then everybody thought that Ryan Seacrest and Andy Cohen were beefing and it kind of made me sad because I actually thought Andy Cohen and Anderson Cooper were really funny when they were drinking and stuff, like I love to see that kind of shit. I love watching people like drink. Like I love like the, like when Kylie Jenner does her like drunk makeup videos and like they like take shots and stuff. I always think that's so fun to watch. I've tried to film a couple and I feel like I'm bad at, not bad at it. I just like, I don't know. I need to actually 
attempt to film a good one. Anyway, so I just think it's fun to see people like drinking and getting a little silly, you know? So I thought it was so fun, Andy Cohen and Anderson Cooper, but I obviously love Ryan Seacrest so much. So I was sad that they were kind of beefing and I thought they were beefing, but then Andy Cohen went on on air with Ryan Seacrest on 102.7 Kiss FM, the best morning radio show ever. And they were like kind of laughing about it. And they were like, we've been friends for like 15 years. We're obviously there's like, we're not fighting. We're friends. It's not, not that deep. I feel like that's the common theme here. Nothing is as deep as, as people speculate it to be ever. I think that's like, I've found that to be true. I, and it's obviously true. Like when Andy Cohen went on and went on, on air with Ryan Seacrest and was like, we're friends. We're not, it's not that, it's not that deep guys. So yeah, I just love Ryan Seacrest. I, he does so much. Have I talked about this before? I love FM radio and I love Ryan Seacrest. Like I've listened to 102.7 Kiss FM for so long. And I used to listen to like on air with Ryan Seacrest in the mornings, like on my way to school. And then I just never stopped. And I still listen to it. If I'm in my car in the morning, obviously I'll listen. So shout out Ryan Seacrest, Sissini, Tanya, if you ever need me to come on, I'd be more than happy to. Mark, he's a producer. <laughs> hey, just let me know. Happy to come on whenever. So, oh my God, didn't mean to ramble on about Ryan Seacrest, but that's kind of like some pop culture stuff that I thought was funny that happened this week. So I may have mentioned to my sweet circlers once or twice or every single episode that I am a bit of a worrier. And one thing that has just always made me nervous for as long as I can remember is going to the doctor. And then when I became an adult was finding a good doctor. And I feel like I've just had my fair share of doctor's appointments where the doctor doesn't actually seem like they care. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm already nervous and then they come in and they seem like they have better things to be doing and better places to be. And it just makes me even more nervous and uncomfortable. And that is until I found ZocDoc. On ZocDoc, you'll find quality doctors who focus on you, listen to you and prioritize your care. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance and are available when you need them and treat almost every condition under the sun. No more Dr. Roulette or scouring the internet for questionable reviews. With ZocDoc, you have a trusted guide to connect you to your favorite doctor you haven't met yet. Millions of people use ZocDoc's free app to find and book a doctor in their neighborhood who is patient reviewed and fits their needs and schedule just right. It really helps me, the constant worrier, worry a lot less. At least worry a lot less about finding a good doctor. So go to ZocDoc.com slash circle time and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash circle time. ZocDoc.com slash circle time. You know what time it is. It's story time. So let's do it. Here we go. My name is Sammy. I am currently driving back to college after winter break, and I'm feeling a little bit sad to be leaving my family again. So I was wondering if you had any advice on just like feeling homesick. I don't know. I just kind of feel out of place in my college town and like a little bit uncomfortable. Like I love my friends and all who are down there, but it's just like a very homesick feeling. So yeah, if you have any advice on that, Love the pod, obviously. I'm listening to it on my five-hour drive. I'm binging it. So, yeah, thank you. Oh, I love this question because I think that this is such a common feeling. And I'm going to be honest with you. Like, even this year, I'm 29. Even this year when I was leaving my parents' house after Christmas and I was going to go to Canada to visit Cody and his family, I was I was sad. I shed, I shed a couple tears. It's sad leaving home. You know, and I think it's easy to you're just so comfortable when you're home and it's easy to get into that comfortable feeling and fall into it and just completely embrace it. And when you leave and you're 
you put yourself in like, you know, you're in college or whatever it is that you're doing and you just feel like a little bit out of place. Like I think that it's scary and it's like, it's so much easier to just stay in the comfort of home or the comfort of whatever you feel is stay in your comfort zone. And if that's home for you, then it's hard to leave and it's totally understandable to feel homesick. And I think it's okay. And it's not something to like shut out. I feel like if you're feeling homesick, like something that always helps me is like, just kind of like texting, checking in with my parents, FaceTiming them when I can, whatever it is, just reaching out to them and talking to them always makes me feel better. But also like knowing that they want you to get out there and they want you to go back to your college town and try try everything you can to just embrace it and immerse yourself in that. That's what's going to make those people that you love at home happy is to see you thriving and happy. And home is home and you can always go back, you know? So I feel like it's easy to find those things that make you feel out of place or uncomfortable and go away from them. But I say just try and jump right in and see how you're feeling, you know, and try and just embrace it all and enjoy it all. And sometimes, you know, you find that the place where you went to college maybe isn't for you and you want to transfer and stuff like that. I'm not saying like, that's not okay. I just think that like, you said you love your friends at school, but you just get homesick. And so I feel like just try to like jump right in and like, it doesn't mean like it doesn't disregard your feelings for being homesick or anything, but it just gives you reasons to enjoy being at school if you just find things to embrace and enjoy about it. So try and jump in and just find some stuff that you love about it and really go for it and really try and embrace school and embrace where it is and embrace where you are. And because it's a really special time in your life. So it's okay that you're feeling homesick. Your home is only a phone call away, only a five hour drive away and it's not going anywhere. So I, I think you should just jump right in and try and instead of jumping into the uncomfortable feelings and the feelings of out of placeness, find ways that you, so maybe you're out of place in, in one certain area, but think about all the other things that you bring to a different area. You know, don't, don't hyper fixate on the negative parts. Try to make the positive parts better and realize what you're giving to the situation instead of what the situation makes you feel like you don't have enough of. If that if that makes sense at all. Okay. Hey, Kelsey, it's Kenley. I'm a freshman in high school this year and I'm taking a few college courses and I was wondering if you've had any advice on how to take it slow and maximize my time. And I know everyone comes on here and says how much they love the podcast, but truly, I love listening to you speak your wise words every week. Bye, circlers. Love you. Okay, that was the cutest message I've ever gotten because she said bye, circlers. And I love when circlers acknowledge the other circlers. I love that. So, okay. So you're a freshman in high school and you're taking some college classes. Wow. Good for you. And you want to learn, you want to know how to maximize your time. I feel like the best way to maximize your time is to make sure that you are not overextending yourself because I feel like when I try to put a million different things on my plate at once, I don't get anything done. So I would say pick core, like pick, just don't do too much at once because that's how all of your time, if your time is split up into a million different ways, you're not able to maximize your time on anything because you're only giving a little bit of your time to a million different things. So pick certain things that are really important to you and maximize on those things. I would say make lists. I was saying that earlier, but it really does help to see exactly what you have for everything right out in front of you. It's so much easier to get it done. And listen, listen to yourself. If you are feeling overwhelmed, you're feeling like something is too much, pull back on that thing a little bit and maximize on the other things. Don't try to do too much because it will just all get too overwhelming. 
But I think it's amazing that you're, you know, pushing yourself and you're taking these college courses. And that's awesome. And that's an important thing to keep doing is pushing yourself. Just don't put don't dip your toe in too many pools, because then you're just going to get it's you're not going to have enough time to swim in any of them if you're just dipping your toe in all of them. Was that the worst analogy of all time? Perhaps. And that's okay. Because we're all about making new analogies here on Circle Time. Just take it day by day and try and do, try and focus on a few things that you really want to maximize on and maximize on those instead of doing a million things at once. All right, let's hear another story. Hmm, not my best, not my best song. Hi, Kelsey. I love you so much. I had a question about the wedding preparation process, specifically finding your dress. I am single and I'm pretty sure when I do find the one, I want to elope, but I'm still obsessed with shopping for dresses and I know I need to find my own special dress one day. And I was wondering how that process was for you, if you felt any pressure being a fashion icon, or did you just find the one and you knew it was the one? I, for one, cannot wait to see your dress. So I'd love to hear about the process. Bye. Oh my God, what a fun question. Well, thank you, first of all. For your nice words and calling me a fashion icon that truly means more than than you know but yeah I think so I think it's fun to think about and even if you even if you elope or whatever you do it's still fun to get like a special dress for the day the process that I went through to get mine I didn't really I had some ideas of like dresses that I like. I think a lot of wedding dresses are so beautiful, but like I knew that I wouldn't want to wear certain ones on my wedding day, but I wasn't exactly sure what I did want to wear. So I wasn't necessarily sure, but actually the first thing I did, and I didn't really do it on purpose, but I actually found a designer that I liked. Like I found a dress designer that I liked first. And I kind of just like, I would look at different articles and different, just like about other people's weddings. Like Vogue has a lot of articles on other people's weddings or people focuses on people's weddings sometimes. And so I would just look at random wedding articles and if if I liked a certain dress, I would see like who designed it. And I would look at dresses, other dresses that they designed or dresses or designers similar to them, stuff like that. And I found a designer I really liked. And then what I did from there was find a um, dress store here in LA that had some dresses from that designer in it. And I went there and like they have like bridal stylists and stuff. And so the girl, shout out Hannah, that worked there, she kind of helped me. And we got, I just picked out a bunch of different styles of dresses from that designer and other designers. And just cause, just to see like kind of what style I liked found a style I liked. And actually the dress that I ended up getting was the second one I ever tried on. I tried on about maybe like 11, 10 total. And I was pretty positive I was going to get the one that I got. And then I went, thought on it, went back to the bridal shop. I tried on like seven the first day, went back to the bridal shop, tried on like three more, I think. And then still, and then tried on the one that I really liked again which was the one that I ended up getting and like just knew that it was the one. And so that's what I did. It was fun. I think it's one of those things where, I mean, I just, I just brought my mom. I didn't want to bring too many people and like get too many opinions. I kind of wanted to like make the call without too much going on in my head and just focus on what I actually really liked. And it's really all about like what you feel comfortable in and what you feel beautiful in. And it's not, you're not doing it for anyone else except yourself and your future partner or your, not your future partner, your partner. And they're going to love you no matter what. So it's whatever you feel good and beautiful in, regardless of what anyone else thinks. And that was my thought process. And that's how I chose the one that I chose. So yeah, that was my process. 
Thank you for asking. That was that. So yeah. Okay. Now that was our story time. As you know, I love story time. I love hearing from you all. And now we are going to do our journal. I have three journal questions today, so we'll probably answer all of them. Talk about a time you spent a night away from home. Okay. Remember, all of these are like elementary school questions. So that's why sometimes they're kind of like phrased like that. But when I wrote this question down, I actually thought of a really funny time. And I want to tell you guys about it because I think it's hilarious. So I was a Girl Scout when I was younger. And I was like, I was kind of a worried child. I was always a little bit worried about everything as I am as an adult. And that's okay. And my mom always like, you know, let me be me. And if I didn't want to do something because I didn't want to do it, she was understanding of that. And one of those things was like a sleep away camping trip with Girl Scouts. And how they did it was you went, the Girl Scouts went away for like two nights and we camped out. And they went one night and then the second day, it was like a campsite that was pretty close. So the second day, like the parents got to come for a campfire and any of the girls who didn't want to do the camping could come. And then the parents left and we, and the girls spent one more night there. So my mom was like, okay, let's go. Cause I didn't want to spend the night camping. I was scared. And my mom was like, that's fine, but let's go to the camp fire at least. So you can still be a part of it for a little bit. So we go and we get to the campfire and I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. They they had like these huge tents and it wasn't as like, it wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be, obviously, as most things are. They had beautiful tents, plenty of room for the girls to sleep in. All my friends were there. Like nothing was as scary as I thought it was going to be. And it was a little bit more like quote unquote luxurious than I thought it was going to be. It was just, there was just like, nicer tents than I thought and more space than I thought. And so we did the campfire. And then I like looked at my mom and I was like, I want to sleep here tonight. I want to do the sleepover. And she was like, okay, good. Go for it. So I decided that I was going to do the sleepover. Now, something that the Girl Scout leaders did not probably see coming was that if you brought the moms and then the moms left again, it was going to kind of like set off everyone in like a tizzy. Like when I was teaching, the parents would drop the kids off, they'd be fine. But when they came back for the Halloween parade, for example, and then they left after the Halloween parade, the kids couldn't like comprehend that. Like they couldn't comprehend that their mom came and left and didn't take them with them, you know? So when the moms came for the campfire and then left again, the girls that like had had already been there kind of all freaked out. And we're like, why did my mom leave me in the woods? I want to go home with my mom. My mom already left, like blah, blah, blah. Freaked out. And everyone kind of was like losing their shit a little bit. I was like excited. I was with my friends. We were like excited. But there were a few people who were pretty like upset. There was this one girl and she was so, so upset. And she just like was sad. It was scary. You know, I get it. Like, Her mom came and left and she was in the woods by herself. And that's scary. Well, she wasn't by herself, but you know what I mean? Without her mom. And so she is like losing her shit. She's screaming, crying. And we're all like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And she's like, (laughs) and she works herself so up so much that she projectile vomits everywhere. So what happens is she's working herself up. I can literally still see it to this day. She puts her hands over her mouth, but like doesn't close her, like doesn't like actually cover her mouth, puts like her fingertips kind of spread apart over her mouth and then proceeds to projectile vomit in the big tent everywhere. So it goes, it shoots through all of her like fingers, spraying people across the face, getting like 
all of the sleeping bags, like they were like magazines and stuff all over the magazines, all over people's like belongings. Literally, I can see my friend across the way and it literally going across her face, like just streaking her in the face like this other girl's vomit. Projectile vomits in the throughout the entire tent. And everyone is like, oh my God, freaking out because this girl just projectile vomit all over the place. And then, and then the girl starts to freak out even more. Then we're all freaking out. So they like shuffle us out. They're cleaning the vomit off the poor girl's face, like throwing everything away. And we all are secluded to the tiniest tent ever sleeping on top of each other, sharing sleeping bags because everything else was covered in throw up. And the big tent that I was so excited to sleep in became the tiniest thing in the world. And we were all sleeping on top of each other and I couldn't sleep. And the girl finally stopped crying and everything was fine. But except for the fact that we were like stacked on top of each other. And that was like a night that I spent away from home that I wish that I didn't. But it is still that story will never leave my brain. And it always makes me laugh. So camping was fun with the Girl Scouts. Never forget. Okay, so there's the night that I spent away from home or one of them. Next question. Top 10 list of people you wish you could meet. Okay, we're going celebrities, obviously. My brother always tells me to start with 10, but I can't think of, I can't think like that. I would have to write it out first. And I'm doing this off the top of my head. So I'm so sorry, Kevin, if you're listening, but I have to start at number one. Number one is Taylor Swift. Number two is Ryan Seacrest. Three, I'm going, I'm going to say like Eliza Hamilton. <laughs> okay. I would love to meet... Barack Obama, Michelle Obama. I would love to meet. I would love to be Blake Lively. I feel like that would be kind of fun. I would love to meet Emma Stone. I would love to meet Adele. Who else would I love to meet? I would I would love to meet Kiki Palmer. Who else would I love to meet? Oh, this is tough. I would love to meet. Mm, I'm going to go Harry Styles. Just because. Duh. That's my list. And I feel like I'm missing someone. I don't know. I went with like people who are alive because I feel like I could do another one with people that. Have passed away. But that's what I'm going for. That's that's off the top of my head. That's that's the top 10 list. And I definitely feel like I'm missing someone that's like obviously and I didn't even think about it. OK, last but not least. Your thoughts about rules. <laughs> it's so funny because like kids, obviously, when they answer this, probably think differently than I am thinking now. But I feel like rules are pretty important. Sometimes. Some rules are dumb. A lot of rules are to keep us safe. And I think that we need rules. I think some sometimes I don't like some rules. But like I like like speed limits. I think those keep us safe, even though sometimes I go past them. I think like like wearing a seatbelt is a good rule. I'm all about car rules, obviously. What's another good rule? I think don't talk with food in your mouth is a good rule. I think that do unto others as you would want done unto you or whatever it is. I think that's a good rule. I think there's a lot of good rules and there's a lot of stupid rules too. But for the most part, I think rules are good. So yeah, those are my thoughts on rules. And there we have it. Another riveting story time for you, or I mean journal time for you. And last but not least, I couldn't find my whiteboard, but we have our quote. And today's quote is, those who don't believe in magic will never find it by Roald Dahl, an author. 
And that's what I want to leave you with. So go look for some magic, even in the little things. And thank you for listening to today's episode of Circle Time. Don't forget to give this five stars and a good rating. And I love you all so much. And I'll talk to you next week. Bye, my sweet circlers. note that this episode may contain paid endorsements and advertisements for products and services. Individuals on the show may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to in this episode.